What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Wrestling Rundown for another installment of the Midweek Wrap-Up. But our Midweek Wrap-Up... What is that? Up. Wrap-Up? No. Up? Yes, what's up? Oh. The ceiling. That's up. Yeah. Up is that way. Yeah. Alright. Uh, you threw me the fuck off. Uh, our Midweek Wrap-Up isn't starting on Tuesday like it normally would. We're actually going to go back... To Monday. Wait, wait hold, hold even, on. Yeah. That's the beginning of the week. Yeah, even we're gonna go even before Monday Night Raw. We're we're gonna stretch it a little bit here. Because on Monday, I'm gonna bring up the photo right now. This was posted on Lucha Underground's Facebook page. In 2016, we are getting season two of Lucha Underground. Yay. And this has been uh, this has been reposted by uh, Cage, by Ivelisse, uh, Son of Havoc, aka Matt Cross, and one of the producers who was just talking about the fact that they are going to be back in Boyle Heights. They're still going to be on the El Rey Network. Officially uh, announced that Alberto El Patron will be returning to Lucha Underground as well. Uh, I'm sure we'll see. Some of our favorite luchador, our, our favorite mask guys like Phoenix and Aerostar and Pentagon Jr. Uh, Vampiro actually also uh, reposted that as well, so we'll see him come back. I'm sure he'll be continuing his storyline with Pentagon Jr. Uh, Son of Havoc uh, actually reposted the uh, the end scene to the final episode where all of them were kind of like going their separate ways. It's kind of a trailer for season two, so you can kind of see where they'll be picking up. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to see that, we actually reposted it on our Facebook page. You can find that link down in the description. Uh, so check that out. Get ready, because in 2016, Lucha Underground is coming back. And I'm excited for it. Are you excited for it? I couldn't tell that you were excited for it. Are you excited for it? You should be excited I, for I it. Am. I Good. am. I'm excited we had to wait until 2016. Yeah. Well, but... Good things come to those who wait. And if we wait, we get good things like Lucha Underground Season 2. Alright guys, Season 2. It's the sophomore jinx. Don't fuck it up. True. Let's move on. Let's actually talk about the midweek wrap-up stuff. Oh, how about the main event? Let's do that. Uh, we open up with a six diva tag team match. We had Team Bella taking on Team Bad. Uh, this match seemed a little clusterfucky at the beginning. Maybe it was just me. It seemed a little clumsy. Um, I don't know. To me, there's a difference between clusterfucky and clumsy. But... Uh, no. I, th I think the thing is... Team Bella's not used to having Nikki <laughs> team me up with them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's a strange dynamic seeing them, specifically Team Bella, in a Six Divas tag match. As a complete unit. Yeah. Um, but I liked the way the match played out. Yeah, no, it, it was just the first couple minutes seemed seemed like a, a very all over the place. There wasn't a lot of sense at the beginning, but then as it went on, it did get very good. I I, th I think it was a feeling out process because I mean, Team Bad have been playing the heel role for a long time. Yes. It's just like you know, as soon as it it all piled on from when Naomi turned heel. Yeah. Uh, you know, so Team Bad is the heel team. The Bellas seem to try and play babyface, but they still get a lot of heel heat. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like a lot of it was testing out, okay, which team is the crowd going to respond to more? Yeah, and, and it was still kind of split down the middle because you had, you, you still get people chanting for Nikki, which blows my mind. Uh, but then at one point during one of, one of the down spots, Sasha started getting the crowd into the match. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was, I don't know, it, it was definitely an interesting dynamic having two typically heel teams face off against each other. Uh, but Team Bad ended up picking up the win. We had a flurry of finishers happening. Uh, it was like a flurry of like, things to face. <laughs> yeah, just... People hitting each other in the like face. Alicia hit somebody in the face. 
and then no, no. Uh, no Alicia was Sa Sasha like hit Alicia and had her down, and then no, that was the end. Bree came in and interfered, but then Tamina kicked her in the face, and then Nikki forearmed her in the face, and then Naomi bootied her in the face, and then Alicia kicked her in the face, and then Sasha stabbed her in the back. Yeah, and then hit the bank statement and made Alicia Fox tap out. She is making all these former Divas champions tap out to the bank statement. So, yeah, so it was like a uh, kick, a kick, a booty, a forearm, and a backstabber. Stab in the back. And then a wrenching of the face. Yeah, back to hands in the face. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, an another win for Sasha. Uh, awesome for her. Well, you know, what I think a lot of that is, is WWE going, hey, you know what was really good on NXT? Sasha versus Charlotte. <laughs> you know what we should do on the main roster? Sasha versus Charlotte. All right, let's get that rolling. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have Rich ask Sheamus about uh, his inability to cash in at Night of Champions, uh, reminding him that Kane uh, kind of ruined that for him. He goes, I know. I remember what happened in Night of Champions. Quit bringing it up. Uh, but then he has yeah. to, Then he, he has Rich to, apparently thinks Sheamus has some memory issues. Well, some people might think that with a haircut like that, Seamus has a lack of judgment and possibly a lapse in memory. He looks in the mirror and goes, oh my god, what happened? And then he forgets that he has a mohawk. Just kind of... Cycles through that every day? <laughs> Groundhog day? <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, he's going against Swagger in our main event. Uh, and Swagger ends up showing up and they kind of have words for one another. Swagger actually had a pretty decent promo here. Uh, yeah, well, that's the thing. Swagger, man, all he needs is the time of day. Yeah, and he and he shines really well. Uh, Sheamus so, ripping off Paige uh, from Monday. So, yeah. good on you. Not being able to write your own shit. Uh, but yeah, uh, Swagger ended up saying that, uh, you know, finished it off by saying that we the people think you're going to look pretty stupid when you try and cash in your money in the bag with a broken ankle. Hey, he's referencing... The crowd and his catchphrase and his finishing move all in one sentence. Yeah. Well played. Uh, we had Stardust take on R Truth. Stardust was flanked yeah, by the Ascension. Yeah, uh, R Truth was out there. We were we were guessing as to who he was possibly going to face. Yeah. It ended up being Stardust. Uh, My money was on Bo Dallas, but yeah, it, that's that was even. That was as plausible as Stardust, but mm -hmm. Stardust, a bit more relevant as far as storylines go. I uh, had to pick up a quick win over R-Truth uh, with the help of the Ascension, causing the distraction, allowing him to hit the Disaster Kick and the Queen's Crossbow. Uh, these two always have good matches. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, we've seen them face each other multitudes of times, and it's just, it, it's, it's, always, it's always good. They come up with a, with a few different things. And I think with now that Stardust has, I guess, more so gone over the deep end, it's even funnier when R-Truth tries to do funny things at him, like his little hump dance, and yeah. then Stardust freaks the fuck out on it. Well, I, to me, it's just not a surprise that all of these guys put together decent matches, because Cody is such a natural yes. in the ring, and R-Truth has so much experience. Yeah, he's a hell of a veteran, so... Yeah, great match by them. Good win for Stardust. Uh, and I like the contacts in the eyes of the uh, Ascension's face paint eyeballs. It's cool. Cool addition. Uh, and then in our main event, we had Sheamus versus Jack Swagger. This was okay. Uh, I actually found myself kind of bored about halfway through. Yeah, the one thing that bugged me is they had way too many times where Sheamus like, dodged out of the ring to get away from Jack Swagger. Yeah. He did it like... Somewhere between three to five different times during the match. Yeah. Uh, you know, Swagger, his usual thing is he's always trying to get the, the Swagger bomb. Uh, finally did get it off. Uh, had the ankle lock on a couple times. Why you gotta go there? Really? Really, bro? Yeah. Uh, For real. Uh, Sw Swagger ends up at... He's got the... He's got the ankle lock on for the second or third time. Sheamus ends up getting out of the ring which draws Swagger out to grab him and toss him back in, but while he's trying to get back into the ring, he gets kneed as he's stepping through the ropes, and then he gets hit with a bro kick inside of the head, 
and Sheamus picks up the win over Jack Swagger. Like a gnarly spot in that match, though, so uh, Sheamus gave the uh, Finley roll to Swagger on the floor. Yes, that yeah, that's yeah, that's not a fun move, and I can't I can't imagine it feels any better on the outside. Uh, but we're gonna move on to NXT. We are two weeks away from NXT Takeover Respect. Uh, we are got... <laughs> Thank you, Ultimate Warrior. Uh, we open up with Eve Marie versus Carmella. Carmella's trying to get revenge because Eve Marie beat her. Yes. Uh, I will say, both girls had good moments in this match. Yeah, Eva, or Carmella had a complete freaking freakout moment at the yeah. beginning. Yeah, she she gets more and more Enzo every time she steps in the ring. Well, she figured out that's the only way she's going to get over. Well, yeah. Uh, Eva Marie... I was on both sides of the fence as far as Eva Marie goes in this match. Because on one side, she had some great physical moments. She had a really, really big, vicious elbow in the corner, finished it up with a really good boot. Uh, she had some great offense. But then she did the Big Show thing, where she kept saying the same thing again and again and again and again to try and get under the skin of the fans and Carmella. By just constantly repeating how you doing and like chanting it slightly like the crowd does and it just it just got annoying and uh, it really that irks me when you can't think of anything other to do than just say the other person's catchphrase or when Big Show constantly calls himself a giant I know I know you are and Eva but what am I uh, you, Pee-wee. Uh, now, you know, to an extent, depending on the scenario, it can bug me a lot of the times, but uh, most of the time, that I just chalk up the fact that, you know, that's a heel trying to annoy you. Yeah. So I guess in that respect, it did work. You know, a heel repeating the same thing over and over again, you know, they're doing it to get on your nerves. And because that's what bad guys do. Yeah. They make you want them to lose. Or just to get their mouths punched. So they stop saying it over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, hard telling. Uh, I think it's just one of those things that's going to have to come with experience, though. True. You um, know, she's only, like, legitimately her sixth televised match in her entire career. That's fair. Uh, Carmella did almost pick up the win, though. Uh, she had her, her little flurry, uh, ended up doing the, uh, like, her hair whip back, and she, like, pinned her right next to the ropes, but Eva ended up getting her foot on the ropes. I thought they were going to turn this whole, like, she can't kick out of the right moment into a fucking storyline. Uh, that would have, I don't know how I would have reacted to that if that was a thing, but the replay did show that she got her foot on the ropes, uh, Eva then tosses Carmella out of the ring, and Carmella hits her head on the ramp, causing Eva to win by countout. Carmella could not get back into the ring. Uh, so that's it. I don't, I don't think they've ever done that before, where someone just whacks their head. Yeah. That's, I mean, I guess it's different. Yeah, it's kind of a far stretch, because... Yeah. She didn't, like, instantly fall out to the ramp. Yeah. And people fall out there all the time. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, we had a new little Nia Jack spot uh, talking about how beauty isn't skin deep. Uh, and uh, talking about how she can, uh, she can outwork and outclass just about anybody. She's still just coming soon. We don't have a debut date yet. Uh, should be interesting when she does show up, though. We had Tyler Breeze taking on Bull Dempsey after their little issues last week. Uh, this was a fun match. Yeah, well, I mean, they've been building up for a couple weeks now. Yeah, with, I mean, yeah, with the, uh, and the Dusty Rhodes. It, it goes team. really, actually, all the way back to Tyler Breeze started Bullfit. It's true. I didn't realize how long the storyline's been going. Yeah, it was Tyler Breeze outrunning Bull Dempsey, which caused the entire Bullfit movement to get started. Yeah, so these guys have a history now. You don't get that a lot for just matches on TV. Mm -hmm. 
you know, a lot of times this kind of investment only goes for pay-per-view shows or the big payoff shows, the takeovers. Yeah. You know, so it's interesting seeing this kind of culminate on a televised show instead of a takeover. Yeah. Uh, but it was a good match. It was. Uh, you know, Tyler used, Tyler had control a lot of the times. Uh, with, uh, you know, the rest holds and... Bull kept fucking up his hair. That was, that's great. Making Breeze all angered. I, I, I like the fact that Bull, I think, more so than anyone, has really played into the pretty boy aspect of Tyler Breeze, uh, which really added to the match. And it was fun to watch, because watching Breeze freak out with Bull messing up his yeah, hair. Yeah, it's was... been a long time since anybody's really touched on the fact that Breeze is a model, and if you mess with his face or his hair, he gets pissed off. Yeah, because he used to do the thing, you know, don't hit me in the face. Uh, yeah, he, it used to be always the thing, uh, but then he kind of put it by the wayside, which I think was good. But, yeah, it was a good callback uh, for Bull. Bull ends up going up to the top rope trying to hit his, uh, his top rope uh, seated senton. Yeah, you call that. You call it the whoopee cushion. The, the call it the demon's toilet. Demon's toilet. Call it the super bonsai drop. There we go. Uh, call it the bullseye drop. Hey. Ah, the bullseye. There you go. Uh, he goes up for it once. Tyler ends up rolling out to the apron. Uh, Bull then throws him back in, sets him up. He goes for a second one, and Tyler ends up getting up and flare bumps uh, Bull right off the top. Goes for the pin and uses leverage on the ropes to pick up the win. What? The bad guy cheated? He cheated. He used the oh, ropes. Oh, the bad guy cheated. And uh. here, here's, here's the really strange thing. Uh, uh. Is that we've got takeover in two weeks. Uh. Tyler's got a match. Yeah. But against Apollo Crews. Yeah, this would be a good match. Like, I, I'm... I, I'm Totally excited for the match. I just think it's interesting that we're not going to get, like, Bull Dempsey's... Revenge. Redemption? Redempsey? Uh, yeah, it is a weird thing. Uh, maybe Bull Dempsey will get involved. Maybe. Maybe he'll be on commentary. Who knows? Uh, maybe he just won't be there. Maybe he's got something that's keeping him from being at TakeOver. Maybe. But yeah, Breeze versus Cruz should be... A very entertaining match, very flashy. I'm excited for that. And he ain't just talking about the camera flashes. Uh-uh. No, I'm talking all, all kinds plenty, of flashy. Plenty of those when Tyler comes out. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I just take pictures on my TV when he comes out. You do? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. I want to feel like I'm a paparazzi. Maybe that's why you. Maybe that's why your phone's broken. Uh, it could be. You just overloaded it with too much Prince Brady. Uh, yeah, it, it, there is too much of a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a true statement. Yeah. All right, so we had an awesome moment for the Divas division, the women's division of NXT. We had the signing of Asuka, formerly known as Kana. Uh, she was super excited to be there. Yes. Uh, Regal brought her out, you know, let her say her piece to uh, the NXT universe. I did like her, her entrance, though. She came out with her mask on. Uh, while the while the Titan Tron said Kana, and then as soon as it said Asuka, she took it off. And I, I, I I'm wondering if she's gonna keep the mask as kind of probably. A thing. Uh, I just thought it was kind of a cool like it was a transition in character. It was cool. Um, then we had we had a very similar situation we had with the debut of Hideo Itami. Yeah, I was saying it was the the only Japanese person storyline they know. Yeah. Which is have two other people come out and interfere in their debut. Yeah. The upside was, though, I got... Well, I guess it ended up being a downside. I got really hopeful because one the people that came out to, I guess, welcome Asuka to NXT was Dana Brooke and Emma. And I really wanted to see Asuka kick Dana Brooke in the face. Me too. Um, I just want to see her kick somebody somewhere. Come on, guys. Unfortunately, we had a really awkward situation here. Uh, you know, I don't think it was as, as awkward as much as it was ominous. You know, you know what? Yeah, I, I, you're, you're right. Because they told her to leave and she left. 
But when she got to the top of the ramp, she turned around and smiled at them. Which then, they all of a sudden got really weirded out. They yeah. got nervous looks on their faces. Yeah. Uh, which is smart, you know. Uh, you'd be bright not to show up to the next couple of NXT tapings. Yeah, I mean... Let her, let, let, let Kana cool down. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, definitely, I, I'd be pissing myself if I was Emma or Dana Brooke with, uh, Asuka smiling back at me like that, like, yeah. oh, I just royally pissed her off. Uh, so, good luck. Sorry, Emma, that you got dragged into this situation. All right, so we have an update on the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. We didn't have any matches this week to, uh, well, not live at least, to determine who's moving on in yeah, the tournament. Yeah, there's one of the live events. Uh, yeah, in Austin, Texas, we had the Mechanics advance over the VOD Villains. Yeah, my boys. That is awesome. Dash and Dawson, my homies. <laughs> And they will face the winners of next week's match between Enzo and Cass taking on Finn Balor and Samoa Joe. Yeah. Uh, and that'll be uh, for the first spot in the finals, I believe. That's what comes after the semifinals. Right. Uh, and then Corbin and Rhino, who advanced over Gargano and Ciampa last week, will face the winners. I'm guessing next week we're going to get... Or, may, or maybe they're going to do this at a live show, and we'll get whoever wins. Uh, we're going to get the Hype Bros taking on Jordan and Gable. The winner of that faces Corbin and Rhino. Those will be our two semifinals matches. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're probably going to get what, uh, what Thomas predicted. We're going to get uh, Joe and Balor versus Jordan and Gable. It's looking that way, at least. And it is, yeah, it maybe. is possible. I, I was thinking it was we we're going to get Balor and Joe versus Corbin and Rhino. That'd be interesting. Because I have a hard time seeing them bringing it up at this point now that Corbin and Rhino have advanced. I have a hard time seeing them bringing Gable and Jordan up to the semifinals and beating Rhino and Corbin. Think so? Yeah, because, I mean, it's very, very atypical of WWE to... Have it be heel heel. True. Uh, and I just kind of want to see Mojo Rally get crushed by Corbin and Rhino. That, well, we can guarantee that'll be fun. Uh, so yeah, so we're you know we're gonna be getting our semi. You do that stupid ass hammer dance if they win. And Corbin and Rhino win. Oh. Scare me for a second. Uh, so yeah, so we get our semifinals matches probably next week. Uh, on NXT, and then the following week we'll get the finals at TakeOver. TakeOver, guys. Speaking so of close. tag team matches, we had our main event of NXT. Oh, I thought we already talked about main event. No, the main event of NXT. The NXT main event. Well, what is NXT the main event of, then? Of the midweek. Oh. This is the main event of the midweek. So this is the main event of the main event of the midweek. Exactly. We had Blake and Murphy getting their rematch from NXT TakeOver Brooklyn for the tag team titles taken on the VOD Villains. Uh, this started off interesting because... Yeah, I think it was Gotch and Murphy were... Or it was... Uh, no, Gotch and Blake... Like we're in the short tights. Yes. Uh, we're about to like really start to get into it, and Blue Pants showed up. Yeah. And Blue Pants out of nowhere. Chased Alexa Bliss into the ring, which interrupted the uh, I think wrist lock that was going on. Yeah, and the, and the like both guys just spread up, split apart, and the refs like. It was a smart move. You don't get in the middle of a chick fight. No. You either get out unless, of the way. Unless unless you're an, unless you're like a post-attitude era referee because then the girls roll over the top of you. Yeah, no, you either get out of the way or you just start cheering. <laughs> uh, Both. And the, the referee's like, you gotta get out of here. What are you doing? And then, like, they ended up splitting apart. Alexa got away and, yeah, Blue Pants chased her to the back. So, 
taking care of that situation. Hey, okay. uh, that's what then, Blue Pants is there for. Exactly. Uh, Take and care of business. Both these teams put on another hell of a match. Uh, very entertaining. Uh, I just this this is why I have I have so high hopes for the main roster tag team division in over the next couple of years with teams like this because they have such good chemistry not only as teams but against each other and they're very versatile. Yeah. Uh, you know, Blake and Murphy are both just, it's like the perfect package as far as strength and athleticism on their side. And then the VOD villains are just a fun gimmick. They're always entertaining uh, and just I like those guys. And just consistent in the ring. Um, I, have, I have one thing, though, a small criticism Okay. on the part of the VOD villains. Uh -oh. Specifically Aiden English. Are you going to make him tan up? No, 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 God, no. Power to the pale people. <laughs> All right? You and your ginger self. I know. Like, no. You see my forearms, they don't look that bad, but you lift the shirt up and it's like, whoosh, ghost under yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it it's like, it's like it the changes movie powder is going on under my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what's what's your uh, what's your criticism for Aiden? It's like Aiden a planet English. Hoth is happening over there. Just everything's covered in snow. <laughs> Are you Kevin Hoth? Sure. <laughs> uh... Just, oh, that's when December when Star Wars comes gotcha. out. Gotcha, okay. Uh, I want Aiden English to do the swanton from the top rope. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. I mean, let him do what he wants. He's doing a, he is doing a swanton from the second rope. I mean, that's... Yeah, but I mean, he's not like a big, giant dude. He's tall. He's tall. But it's like, okay, Kevin Owens does a swanton from the top rope. Yeah, he never hits it. Aiden English will hit it. <laughs> a lot more people will be way more willing to let Aiden English hit that swanton than they would Kevin Owens. Well, yeah, because Kevin Owens just has probably 40 or 50 pounds on Aiden English. Hey, he's a lot more cylindrical. Yes. Uh, yeah, well, and he, yeah, he he went for he went for the second rope swanton and... Got the knees. He got the knees instead. Uh, See, if he would have went to the top, I <laughs> uh, would have been too surprised to even put up knees. And then there was a second where Murphy gets tagged in and does the double knees from the top rope, and we thought it was over. We thought, holy shit, they're going to switch the titles already. Uh, Aiden kicks out. He's able to fight off a double team from both Blake and Murphy, tags in Gotch, eliminates uh, Murphy, who just tagged in Blake. Blake ends up getting hit with the whirling dervish. His dervish got whirled, bro. Real fast. And the VOD villains retain the NXT Tag Team titles. VOD villains, still champs. Derving whirlishes all day. <laughs> they whirl the whirlishes while they whirl the dervishes. And any other combination of that. My brain is whirling in dervish right now. It's. Is it whirling or is it dervishing? It's whirling in dervish. There's like a pile of dervish, and it's just whirling. <laughs> You're gonna have to clean your brain off later. I'm probably gonna have to. Uh, that's it for the midweek wrap up. Uh, not not too much going on, but a lot at the same time. So it's uh, you know everyone everyone got to show up, say hi, because they did promos after that match. Yeah. They had Cass and Enzo promo, and they had uh, Balor and Joe. And we actually talking had... about going into their. And we actually had semifinals match. We actually had Jordan and Gable and the Hype Bros both do promos uh, heading into their uh, quarterfinals match. Yeah, so all the cool people showed up. You know, Ready, Willing, and Gable was there. Uh, Zack Ryder was there. Yeah, Zack Ryder was there. We got to, the Vaughn Villains retained the Tag Team Champions. The three Slutsketeers showed up on the main, main event. Uh, it was a big party. Yeah, it was a midweek party. And yeah. we found out Lucha Underground Season 2 is coming so, next year. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! I'm excited. Calm down, I'm not so cold. Wow. I, th I thought the the almost bald and the goatee would give me the. I think I go full bald. Oh. All right. I can I think that's a freaking beer. I guess I'm not so cold. Thanks for watching the Midweek Grab Up. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe. Click all them links down in the description. Hey, how about them links like Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Tumblr, Instagram? And emails. There's two of them. Fanstock. Both of them. Fanstockwrestling at gmail.com where you can talk to all three of us.
or Kevin underscore Hawk 636 at Hotmail.com. That's right, I still use that outdated Hotmail.com address. Uh, it still goes through Microsoft Outlook now, but uh, yeah, who cares? There's also a playlist over on the other side of Kevin Hawk where we have our review of Night of Champions, we have our review of Monday Night Raw, and we obviously have a midweek wrap up coming up next. We will have a SmackDown rundown and an indie news coming up this Monday. Oh, Why are you looking at me like that? Good. We've got more videos. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, this is the midweek. There's still more stuff to do. With but I thought it was the main event. Main event of the midweek. Ah. Uh. Thomas, you're back. We'll see you guys later.